I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody. In this we're covering something that's pretty cool. Um, so there was a point. There was once a point in time where there were certain mobile CPUs, yeah, laptop processors, that could in fact be installed in a desktop motherboard. So the processor you're looking at here is not a laptop CPU. This here is your, your typical socket 754 AMD Athlon 64 3200 plus CPU. Here's a look at the back of it. But have a look at what's installed on this socket 754 motherboard. Introducing the mobile AMD Athlon 64. This is a socket 754 CPU. So this particular model of processor predates the Turion 64 which was based on socket S1. These particular processors use the same exact socket, you know, the socket 74, uh, in, lap in a laptop. So this of course is a desktop motherboard. I'll go ahead and pull this out for a second that way you can just have a look at this CPU. So what's interesting about this processor was the fact that it was not actually from a laptop. No. This thing was actually factory installed in a desktop computer made by Everex. I no longer have the original desktop. I don't even think I even have the original motherboard. But um, this CPU was installed in a Everex tower. And uh, it was kind of interesting to see. So as you can tell this particular CPU does not have a heat spreader. Unlike of course the uh, the desktop Athlon 64 which does have a heat spreader you're looking at the actual CPU die right there so here's some information about this processor on CPU world it's the mobile Athlon 64 3400 plus it's a 2.2 gigahertz CPU based on socket 74 it's a K architecture um, Newark core 90 nanometer process it's a 64-bit CPU, single core, single thread. It has one meg of L2 cache. So some of the Socket 74 CPUs, uh, the Athlon 64s back then had um, had either 512K or one meg, depending on the core. I think those were the two common numbers you would have. Now, of course, the AMD Simprons I had, I believe they had just 128K of L2, but uh. So I do have a laptop on hand that um, does have this CPU, and I will have to have a look at that probably in this video. I mean, just for fun, maybe I'll swap it in and see if it works. But yeah, this is um, this particular CPU will work in a desktop motherboard, provided the motherboard does have the microcode in the BIOS. I may have tried this motherboard in the past. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. Matter of fact, I know this motherboard still works. I mean, I don't, it, I didn't, didn't even have the CMOS battery installed in it anymore. So who knows? Uh, we're gonna try it out and see if it works. I'm gonna get this installed into a system. So this is a, uh, this is the Enforce 3 based motherboard. So this motherboard has, uh, it was, it's from around 2003, 2004, that time period. No PCI Express slots. Now there were some Sonic 754 motherboards that did have a, a, a PCI Express 16 and some in a PCI Express 1 slot. Um, I probably have one kicking around somewhere, but it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a OEM board. This here is actually a retail board. So let's go and get this thing set up and ready to go. Um, I should mention that the uh, the desktop that this processor came out of had a special cooler with it as you can see um, this cooler has a raised part well considering what it does is it makes contact with directly with the CPU die considering when you have this CPU of course in comparison to a desktop variant with the heat spreader you may notice the heat spreader 
the course makes it a lot higher than this directly in comparison when you in, in comparison to having just the uh, bare CPU die so the core itself has to have that extra lip there to make contact with the uh, the CPU die directly okay everybody so now I got the uh, CPU cooler installed and with the CPU core installed you wouldn't really know the difference between it being a mobile uh, Athlon 64 versus a desktop version because of course uh, the core looks no different from up here I also got a heat sink placed on that uh, uh, Enforce 3 chip and we gotta install a battery in this thing and get this thing into a uh, case I also got two gigs of a uh, DDR 400 memory installed and I'll be using this Radeon X uh, 1300 Pro AGP graphics card. So we're going to get this toss into a system and we'll continue from there. Okay everybody, so I got this system set up and running in this old crappy beige case. Um, it's just <laughs> it's just so ugly. And guys, look. That is a pretty crazy knockoff of the Internet Explorer logo. I'm surprised Microsoft didn't have something to say to this, manuf this case manufacturer about that. Um, yeah, both sides have that. <clears throat> I mean, dang. <laughs> I guess I should call this thing the Internet Explorer system. It's got the IE logo on the side of it. But, um, so, we got the, uh, got the mobile Athlon 64 CPU installed and running in this thing. And <laughs> just for fun... I put one new set on this thing. Um, let me tell you, it was quite a chore getting it getting it to run. And this is version 2004, and I must say, Windows 10 has become an absolute bloated mess. It really has. Um, now, of course, some those of us with their with their Core i3s, i5s and i7s and their Ryzen 3s, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7s wouldn't notice it, but anytime you go to run uh, Windows 10 on legacy hardware like this, especially stuff at this age, um, it really, it really shows. Um, and it's gotten worse. Matter of fact, I'm soon going to be doing a video about that, talking about how bloated Windows 10 has gotten over the years. Um, the original Windows 10 from 2015, um, practically, I'd say practically any system <clears throat> that is a AMD K8, which is like this, or later, or an Intel Pentium 4, um, Socket 775, or newer, running Windows 7, it could generally run Windows 10 just fine. That's not exactly the case anymore. So when I went to install Windows 10, I couldn't even get through the out of box experience or OOBE. Um, it would just it would hang and freeze and it would say something went wrong blah 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 and I had to use a uh, technique on um, bypassing it through the built-in administrator account it was a real pain in the butt and of course in newer builds on this 10 if you don't answer those stupid questions about the telemetry um, about the uh, the advertiser ID and diagnostic data, all that crap. Um, if you don't answer the questions in the original OOB, anytime you um, go to add a new user account or anytime you go to log in afterwards, it will still it will still um, start up msoobe.exe and it will just do the same crap. And here's some footage of it actually of the just just taking forever. Yeah, guys, have a look at this. Windows 10, literally, this this animation here is apparently uh, is apparently stealing <laughs> resources from the system. Because listen, during the brief moment that these little dots are not moving, you hear the hard drive access. I mean, this is this is just crazy.
Now I'm telling you guys, Windows 10 has become an absolute bloated mess. So yeah, this it was it was a headache. So once I got past that, I was able to finally get into this thing. And for real basic stuff, it is usable. It does have its quirks. Um, so this is the oldest. I'd say this is the oldest AMD setup I've ever run Windows 10 on. Um, now I have installed and ran Windows 10 on other Socket 754 setups before, but they were using the GeForce 6100 slash Enforce 430, I believe it was, motherboards. Um, and of course those were a bit newer. They had PCI Express slots and um, I think HD audio and not AC97 like this piece of crap here does. <laughs> uh, this thing <laughs> It's, it's an Enforce 3 250 uh, platform. It is just so horribly slow. <laughs> the motherboard is so old, it actually has a header on board for a game port. You know, the, jo the joystick? Yeah, that. <laughs> um, I mean, it does It does work. Um, now, it does, as I think I said, it does have its issues. Um, matter of fact, um, if I go to play a CD, if I go to play a CD, um, and I go to switch tracks on this media player, it cry, it causes a blue screen. <laughs> yeah, it's just a crazy. Um, but browsing the web, so like that, it does work for that. Um, generally, Windows 7 would be a better choice of an operating system for this setup. Um, but I decided just for the heck of it to see what Windows 10 would do. Now, that's out of the way. It's going to talk about... Um, the uh, motherboard. Uh, so I, I did mention it was, of course, the M4-3250 based uh, motherboard. Um, it's almost like this motherboard didn't exactly know what CPU I had installed in it. Now the BIOS, when I started this up, the BIOS did report that it was a uh, uh, AMD Mobile Athlon 64-3400 Plus. However, there's actually a couple different versions of the Mobile Athlon 64-3400 Plus. Um, so Let's have a look at what we have in this thing. So this is CPU Z. And you can see it's the uh, it's the Newark core, a 90 nanometer core. This is actually a 1.35 volt CPU. It has one meg of L2 cache. So it's kind of like it's it's kind of like a mix between the uh, the desktop claw hammer and and the, and the uh, desktop Venice. The Venice was a 90 nanometer chip with just 512k of L2. Um, so, if we look, this is the. Uh, let's have a look at all the information there for those who are curious. So this is the motherboard. As I mentioned, it's an M43 250. We got two gigs of DDR400 installed. We have uh, Radeon X1300 graphics. Uh, now the driver for this graphics card is not playing too nice on Windows 10, so it's not really like, for example, it's it's really it's like I had the basic display adapter driver actually going, but um. So yeah, there's there's a few different things that to note about this particular uh, laptop CPU is <clears throat> normally when you think of laptop CPUs, you think okay they they sip a lot less power and they run cooler. That wasn't exactly the case for these particular mobile processors. Um, now they did have a low power uh, operating mode where the uh, TDP was a lot lower, but when you look at this TDP here. Is 62 watts. That's quite a bit of heat for a laptop CPU. However, this is a laptop CPU from the mid 2000s. 2003, 2004, that era. So what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing a laptop that has one of these CPUs in it. Um, I mentioned that I may pull it out and actually install it in this desktop. It, it'll be today. Though I might try it sometime later on in a different video. So, and of course, as I was doing that, you got to see some of the information on the screen here. Um, one, I guess I could say one advantage of this mobile, 
processor is its much higher max operating temperature. You can see the max operating temperature of this CPU is 95 degrees Celsius, which is quite hot, especially when you compare it to desktop CPUs such as this one here. This is a 3200 plus Venice. I think that's the right. I think I got the right one. Yeah, Venice. This is a 90 nanometer chip, 59 watt TDP. Max operating temperature just 69 degrees Celsius. V core of 1.4 volts. Um, whereas this one has a V core of 1.35 volts. Now think of it now. Now guys, check this out. So AMD also had the uh, claw hammer core in the mobile chips as well. So it also had a, had a max operating temperature of 95 degrees C in the mobile form. But look at that TDP, guys. 81.5 watts. <laughs> you have to have a good cooling system to handle that. But then again, with the higher headroom, you can just let the you can just let the thing run hotter. Um, it might get a little bit hot on your lap, might burn your leg, but uh, yeah. Um, so now we're looking at the 3400 plus desktop variant, which is a claw hammer core with uh, one meg of cache. It has a max operating temperature of 7 degrees Celsius, V core of 1.5 volts. Okay, so I mentioned earlier um, that this motherboard, it wasn't exactly sure what CPU had installed. So this CPU, the V core is 1.35 volts. Well, this motherboard, guess what the V core, guess what V core it was pushing through it. In the autumn, in the initial setup, so just to, just to give you a hint, guys, um, as you may have seen earlier, this motherboard did not have a CMOS battery installed, so it had it had to have applied fresh, brand new settings when I installed the CPU. Okay, so the V core it was pushing through this processor was it was set to 1.55 volts. Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely more than the 1.35. I mean, I started this thing up initially. And I was like, man, this thing's running awful hot. The uh, the vote, the uh, CPU temperature reported in the BIOS is like pushing well over 50 degrees C, and the little fan was ramping up on the CPU core. I was like, this thing's running awful hot. And I noticed that and I noticed that it wasn't applying the settings. I was like, man. <laughs> so I set the manual. No, I set the uh, the the CPU voltage and uh, all that stuff. The the all the, the CPU control to manual. And I went in and manually keyed in 1.35 volts for the, for the V core, and I set the multiplier to 11 to give this thing 2.2 gigahertz. Um, and of course, it, the CPU was limiting the multiplier to 11; it wouldn't let you go above that. So for those who were saying, "Oh man, they could just you could just up the multiplier however much you want," uh, not exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was one of the weird things about it. Um, I set the V core down to where it's supposed to be, and it immediately cooled way down. Um, so th as you had seen, the the uh, TDP on this chip is 62 watts. So under under max load, it does get to about 53 degrees Celsius, and it idles at around four, 34 to 36 degrees C. Now notice after I've been running this thing for a while. The core temp now reads less than the motherboard temp. Um, I guess I guess the thermal compound has set in and is doing a little bit better job than it was initially. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> so again, these are all the different CPUs I had um, mentioned. Of. Now for this laptop. So I pulled a laptop out for you guys to see if you haven't seen it yet. So. In case you're wondering, okay, does the, the TDP seem awful high? Well, when laptops look like this, it was a little more forgivable. I mean, this thing is, uh, is almost two inches thick. So this particular laptop, I can get the lid open. It has a Mobile Athlon 64 CPU in it. And so, as I mentioned, what I'll do 
in a later video is I'll I think I'm gonna pull the CPU out and install it in this thing and see how it does now if it's the exact same CPU model then no I'm not gonna do that but if it's a different model CPU I might give it a try so um, with that being said some of y'all may, may be curious well how well would the CPU overclock I'm wondering the same thing so I'm gonna actually give that a shot and see how it does so I'll be including that in a later clip in this video okay now we're looking inside the um, InterX floor case I mean it's got the IE logo around the side of it um, so here's a look inside this machine since I don't think I showed it um, since I put everything in here so it's got a uh, 80 gigabyte IID hard drive in here got the uh, X300 or no, excuse me X1300 Pro um, AGP graphics card and it's funny this graphics card actually has a supplemental power connector and it uses a floppy disk drive um, cable <laughs> now I thought now if, if I, I think now I was from what I remember, I thought AGP cards that needed something of power used a Molex connection, but it could be wrong. It could just depend on the card. Now I looked up this card, and it's funny. They never mentioned of uh, the card needing something of power. I think this card only has like a TDP of like 35 or 40 watts. Um, so 2 gigs of DDR400 RAM, and there is the uh, CPU with the... Uh, CPU core installed and I can see there is actually some dust in there I need to take care of um, not that it's really making too much of a difference here just getting out the paintbrush just a little bit it's not going to kill this thing by doing this trying to break that up just a little bit so as I mentioned um the uh you may okay so you may have heard the fan on this thing ramp up a bit earlier um theoretically i could actually adjust that fan to i could adjust the fan curve on this board to, to start up way later considering this cpu is uh it, it can handle much higher temperatures than your standard desktop cpu but i'm not going to do that i'm going to leave it as is because I'm actually, as I mentioned, I'm going to try overclocking this thing and see how I can get it to go. But, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. This is the, uh, I think this is the oldest motherboard I have. Um, this is the oldest board I've installed Windows 10 on, or at least the oldest board I've used in a system that I've installed Windows 10 on. <laughs> I don't think I'd recommend doing that. I, I would probably want to suggest. Windows 7 at the latest, uh, um, as the as the uh, latest OS you would that you could put on one of these things. And it's funny, um, people always talk about Windows Vista being slow, but yeah, Windows 10, the new Windows 10 that's out now, it makes Windows Vista seem like Windows XP. So yeah, I'm going I'm to do a follow up video about that. Anyways, nothing rambling on. Let's go and overclock the mess out of this thing. Okay, everybody, so I just finished uh, overclocking this thing, and it looks like I've hit pretty much the max that it will go. I haven't really tested this thing for long-term stability, but now we're sitting at 2.64 gigahertz, which the uh, the stock was 2.2. Um, this is very sim This These results are very similar to what I would get from a uh, an Athlon 64 3200 Plus Venice. Uh, CPU, which is also the uh, also a 2.2 gig CPU, um, very similar results. So <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say these uh, these mobile Athlon 64s are just they're really similar. They're they're really similar to the desktop version, just with the exception of not having the heat spreader and uh, having a higher headroom for maximum operating temperature. I mean these things can go to 95 degrees Celsius like a typical laptop CPU can. Compare that to the the cap of around 70 degrees C for some of the other uh, desktop variants of this processor. So yeah I think this is 
this is pretty fun, pretty fun little experiment to, to play around with. Um, so, so yeah, I figured, I, I mentioned earlier that I was going to uh, hold off until later to do the, uh, try a different CPU. I still think I am, but I do want to see what's in this laptop, so. I figured it'd be, it would be fair to include this in this video. I know it's probably getting long as it is. I don't know the whole, I don't know the cumulative time amount in this video just yet. I'd have to go back and look, of course, and see. But uh, I figured, what the heck, let's go ahead and uh, pop this thing up. I'm going to eventually be, uh, I'm going to be scrapping this laptop at some point anyway. As you can see, I've already, I've already taken the battery out. As a matter of fact, back in. I think early 2017 I harvested the cells out of it and they were kind of hit or miss. Old Samsung cells. So I figured, I mean this here you get to see the typical uh, installation. Now really to be honest, I can't remember if the CPU is still in this thing. <laughs> I want to say it is. Um, I do think I had been in here to just like have a peek of what was in here but it's been a while. As you maybe you'll see, we have two cooling fans on this bad boy. <laughs> and I mean, you, you got to extract all that heat some way or another. So this comes to show just how uh, just how crazy these uh, laptops had to go for uh, for cooling back then. So these weren't the only uh, CPUs that shared a desktop style socket. Uh, Intel, there for a while, Intel even, I think the, four, the socket 478, uh, they had some older, some older laptops use a, like a mobile variant of the CPU. Now I'm not even sure if it was even classified as a mobile, it could have been something maybe let's say like a 1.6A. For those who are curious, who those who are kind of familiar with the older Intel's, yeah, Intel they had a uh, when they released the Northwood Pentium fours. They, in addition to the ones that were clocked at uh, the 133 bus or the uh, 533 netburst um, bus, uh, they also had they also released some uh, CPUs coined as the, the as a, like an A series, like 1.6A gigahertz. And those had just a 100 megahertz bus and a 400 megahertz, uh, I think, front side bus. And I think those may have been more geared toward like low power draw applications. Now I've got a laptop, and it's in the living room actually. It's an older Dell Instron from that time period. Matter of fact, it's the one that I, for those who watch my cell harvest videos, it's the one I got those green Sony, um, Sony cells out of. I may want to go ahead and crack that thing open and see what CPU we have in it. I actually, one time before I had opened one up like that, and it actually, it's funny, the CPU actually had an integrated heat spreader on it, but these mobile Athlon 64s clearly do not. Okay, so now we're getting into this thing, and you can see the massive the, the absolute massive cooler that we have in here. So we have uh, these four screws that have to come out. Heck, who knows? Maybe I've never been in this thing before. It's been so long I can't remember. Now the CPU that we've been focusing on this whole video did in fact, I think I did mention, it did in fact come out of a desktop system. It was an Everex computer. Um, it was actually factory equipped with that Mobile Athlon 64. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of weird to, to see a, even an OEM system equipped with a mobile CPU, a, a desktop like that. So again, look at the massive cooler. 
Got a heat pipe out this way and a heat pipe out this way. Oh, this is definitely a different one. I think this might be a claw hammer. So let me find a napkin or something to wipe this off with before I pull it out of that socket. Okay, so I've never actually have been in this one. So this appears to be a 3000 plus. Yep, socket 754. So this is an AMA 3000 BX SAP. Let's look that up. <laughs> let's do it on the uh, let's do it on the desktop that's running the uh, the current Mobile Athlon 64. Let's see if let's see if the system crashes when I pull up Chrome. So yeah, the dial on this one's definitely large, which leads me to believe this is in fact a claw hammer. which AMD also had in their desktop Athlon 64. AMA 3000 VEX I think that's a S or a 5. Let me see here. Let me try 5 AP. It's kind of hard to tell if it's a 5 or an S. It is a 5. So there it is on CPU World. I tell you guys, it's it's, it's <laughs> um. I tell you, it's, it, it, using Windows 10 and browsing on a, a single core processor is just it is it, painful nowadays. Okay, so this is a uh, so this this is a 1.8 gigahertz claw hammer. It's TDP. It's 81. 0.5 watts, so this one definitely runs hotter. So, this sink, it, it took a bit of effort to, uh, to extract all that heat out of this laptop. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to ask, well, Nick, if you can stick a mobile Athlon 64 into a desktop, well, could you put a desktop Athlon 64 into a laptop? That, I don't know. I mean, I think one of the limitations we'd have is our cooler. Um, now, considering, for example, like the Venice Athlon 64 has a similar TDP, its max operating temperature is lower at just like like 68 degrees C. So, it could, you could, you very well could overheat the thing. You know, something like that. I mean, I might try it sometime later. I don't know, but... So, yeah. This is our... Uh, CPU out of this compact, which I would say it's probably, I would say it's not as good of a CPU as what's in our little build here. Um, it's based off an old architecture. It's based off a 130 nanometer architecture. It uses more power. It operates at a lower clock. So, I'm going to think about it for a little bit and I might try this out. I mean, feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you would like for me to try this out, I might go and slap it in there and just see what it can do. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll leave this desktop together as is for a little bit. And I might swap it out. I might swap this into it to see what it can do. So anyways. 
there you have it. It's a, a a laptop CPU that you can install into a desktop. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that's it for this video. But don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel. And also, don't forget to tick the bell so that way we'll get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat, interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back and thank you for your support.